recording and Hello, everyone. We're back. Oh, uh, got it. An exciting topic on tonight. I believe it will really bless your life. We will be getting started in about three minutes. So hold on for three minutes. And we will be getting started. Okay, let's get started. This is Lace. Love Applied Can Endure. It's a video club. Uh, and we talk about things that are connected with love. Um, this session, we're talking about keys that unlock success. And we're on key number 23. So if you want to reach me, uh, I always put my information up here first. So you can have it. Um, I'm Dr. C.V. White. You can mail, uh, mail me, write to me at Dr. C.V. White, LLC, 150 Post Office Road, Waldorf, Maryland, 20604. Or you can email me at Dr. C.V. White at gmail.com. Or visit my website at cvwhite.com. Or you can support our video club and, and give to it. We're not a nonprofit, but we are a video club that's trying to reach the world and prepare people for great success in their lives. So you can you can send uh, a donation if you desire to Cash App, CV White LLC, or PayPal, drcvwhite at gmail.com. Okay, so let's get started with key number 23. Um, this is an exciting one um, because we don't think much about it. We just do some things and 
<clears throat> related to it, but we don't think much about it. And that's be diligent in prayer. <clears throat> Usually when we talk about prayer, it's a very formal conversation. Um, uh, you know, we, we have our ideas about what to pray and when to pray. Uh, so let's talk about being diligent in prayer. And let's understand when we get started here, we're talking about communicating with God, communicating with our Father uh, who created us. But let's talk about diligent first, what that means. So we got a, a definition from um, vocabulary.com. This is a dictionary. And it is someone who is diligent, works hard and carefully. And if you want to write the epic history of your family, you have to be very diligent in tracking down and interviewing all of your relatives. I think that's going on in my family right now, out there in Los Angeles. So uh, that person that's gathering that information has been very, and is still diligent about it. Uh, diligent comes from the Latin word diligere, which means to value highly, take delight in. But in English, it has always meant careful and hardworking. If you're a diligent worker, you don't just bang around at any at your job, you earnestly try to do everything right. Although being uh, lucky and talented doesn't hurt, uh, and this is this is still from the definition because I don't use the word lucky. This is the definition from um, vocabulary.com. Although being lucky and talented doesn't hurt, it's, it's the diligent person who eventually succeeds. Definition of diligent. It's an adjective in quietly and steady, preserving, especially in detail or in exactness. A diligent or, pers uh, or patient worker. That's what that is. And so if we continue with that definition, we're gonna look at some synonyms because that sounds kind of complicated. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. That's coming on now. Uh, the synonyms for preserving is preserving, patience, enduring, trying circumstances even with temper or characterized by endurance. As an adjective, it's characterized by care and perseverance in carrying out tasks. A diligent detective investigate all clues a diligent search of all the files, busy, actively or fully engaged or occupied, careful exercising caution or showing care or attention, a serious um, marked by care and persistent effort, hardworking, industrious, tireless, untiring, characterized by hard work and perseverance. Okay, so we know that we're gonna have, that 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 prayer is communicating with God, and um, the definition implies that we just talked about that being diligent is something that is done consistently all the time. Now, keep in mind that God is our Father, and in, in the natural, we we. We have natural things to explain spiritual truth. Those of you who have talked to a father or a male figure in your life, or even your mother, uh, do you talk to them the way you pray? No. You talk to them about your life issues. But we don't talk to God like that because prayer is communicating with him. Prayer is how many times, I mean, how many of us Pray when we have a need. We're supposed to pray about everything all the time. God, how can I do this? Uh, why is this happening? Help me with this. Or, God, did you see that? That was really funny. 
you know, just talk to him as you would another person. How many of us only pray when we have a problem? How many of us only pray one hour a day? How many of us only pray when we have a special situation? How many of us only pray when our family and friends are in trouble? Prayer is communication with God. And we are encouraged to pray every day for everything all the time. But we don't do that, you know, because we make prayer such a formal event. You know, if, some, if something special is happening or not happening, we pray. But we don't just pray generally like we're talking to a friend, like we're talking to a family member. We don't do that. And so that's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Diligent in prayer, talking to God about everything. And, you know, I'm, I'm learning I'm learning that that works so beautifully. When he wants to be included, he wants to be included. Sometimes I'm thinking about things that I want done. I haven't even asked. And then he'll send someone with it. Or somebody will call me up and talk to me about it. Or I'll get some revelation on it. And it doesn't matter how small it is. I will say to the Lord sometimes, Lord, you know, I haven't had enough sleep. See. He wakes me up every day. I haven't used an alarm clock in so many years. I can't, I can't remember the last time I used it. And so I'll say to him something like, um, Lord, you know that I'm tired. But when you know that I can function and do well, wake me up. And he will. He wakes me right up. And I get up. So I don't want to get up sometimes, you know. But I asked him to. So I ordered that I go ahead and get up. Because he's, I asked him, when well, you know I can function okay, wake me up. Are you talking, Inez? Because I can't hear you. Inez, are you talking? I can't hear you. You're on mute. You're on mute, Inez. You're still on mute. I can't hear you. But but anyway, uh, I don't know how to fix that. Uh, All right, I can't. I, I don't know how to fix it, Agnes, but I can't hear you. Yeah, I can't hear you. Uh, but anyway, our basic, our basic uh, scripture for our subject tonight is Matthew seven, seven through eleven, and this is very important because it's going to talk about some things that we have known all of our. This is one scripture everybody gets you know, to know, but don't uh, use it the way it's designed to be used. So let's read it. Uh, Matthew 7, verse 7 through 11. And then we will we'll analyze, uh, analyze it. Um, there's something wrong with your sound on this. So when you get that right, you can let, you, you can let me know what you were saying. Ask and keep on asking, and it will be given to you. Seek and keep on seeking, and you will find. Knock and keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who is keeps on asking, receive, and he who keeps on seeking, finds. And he and to him who 
keeps on knocking, it will be opened. Or what man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will instead give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will instead give him a snake? If you then, evil, sinful by nature, as you are, know how to give good and advantageous gifts to your children, how much more will your father who is in heaven perfect as he is, give what is good and advantage, advantageous to those who keep on asking him. Okay, so we're going to break this down. We're going to break this down. Um, so Inez, you, you got, uh, try your best to fix that sound so we can hear what you're saying. Okay. <clears throat> Let's start with asking. Ask and keep on asking and it will be given. Ask all the time, not when you have a need. Keep on asking, no matter how many times or how many different things you're asking for. Um, I, I took some information from Matthew Henry's concise commentary, who's, which says, prayer is the appointed means for obtaining what we need. Pray. Pray often, make a business of prayer, and be serious and earnest in it. Ask as a beggar, ask for arms. Ask as a traveler, ask for the way. So we ask for everything. We ask for everything. You know, that's what we should do. We should include God in everything. God, should I do this or should I not? God, what should I say to this person? Because you know, if I say what I'm going to say, it's not going to go well. <laughs> so what should I say? You know, ask when you cannot find things, uh, when you can't find something. I do that all the time. Where, where, where did I put my keys? Most of the time I can find them, but every now and then I put them somewhere. And I ask him, I'm looking for a book. What did I do with it? He tells me, you know, he wants to talk to us like that. Ask for finances when you need it or want it. You know, don't just not ask. We have not because we ask not. Ask when you need help doing something. You know, ask with, if, if it's cooking. No matter what you're doing, if you need help, ask Holy Spirit. Ask Holy Spirit. Ask sometimes when I'm running late, you know, and uh, somehow or another I get there on time, you know, and um, get stuck in traffic and say, God, get me out of the traffic so I can be on time. And he does. And he does. Ask when you do not know what to do. Ask for the clothes you should wear today. What should I wear today, Lord? What would be good? What would be good in this situation? You got an appointment, you got an interview or something like that, or you just, you know, you just want to look good. Ask, what should I wear today? And then ask for other people, intercede for other people. Don't just ask for yourself. Ask for other people as well. Ask for school help when you have homework or assignments in school, whatever school you're going to. Uh, if it's just some training session, ask for help if you need it. Ask for spiritual things. You know, if you want to be a, a, a bishop or if you want to be something, if you want some spiritual gifts, ask. Ask for deliverance when you need to be delivered from something. Ask for Holy Spirit to wake you up at a certain time if that's what you need and want. Ask for everything. You have not because you ask not. This, this system requires us to ask. So you keep on asking. You know, he's not saying, ask me for something and then worry me and worry me. Keep asking me because he gives us, he gives us things at the point of prayer. He says, yes. So we don't have to keep asking for the same thing. So what is this scripture talking about? 
It's talking about let's ask for, let's keep on asking for things. Keep on asking for things and not to be afraid. You know, the asking, the seeking, and the knocking are different ways that he wants to give us for different situations. And we're going to talk about each one of those. You know, we're going to talk about each one of those. So that's the asking part. You just keep on asking. Asking, make that make that an everyday event in your life. Make that a part of your lifestyle. God, which way should I get? I, I, I've got to go to the shopping center. What's the best way to go today? He wants to be involved in our life like that. And, but he's not going to push his way in. We have to invite him. Okay, let's go to seek. Seek and keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on seeking. Do not um, do not seek for special things, but seek for everything you need or want. Matthew Hemmings' concise commentary says, seek as for a thing of value that we have lost or as a um, merchant man that seeks goodly pearls. So you're seeking for things now, not asking, you're seeking for things. You're seeking for restoration. You're seeking to get a business venture. You're seeking for knowledge. You're seeking for understanding. You're seeking for revelation. You're seeking for the direction that you want to go in every endeavor that you're walking in your life path. What you want to take. You know, you seek that. So seek for everything you desire. Do not be religious. And act like there are certain things that you cannot have. And so that's been our problem. We think God won't give us some things. But he will give us everything as long as it's according to his word. So asking is one way we get things. And seeking is another way we get things. And But we have to do it diligently all the time, every day. And make that a part of our lifestyle. Knock and keep on knocking and the door will be open. Knock on door of opportunity. Doors of new beginning. Doors for whatever you know you want or, or you're called to do. Matthew Henry says this about that. Knock as he desires to enter the house. Knock at the door. Sin has shut and barred the door against us, but prayer by prayer, we knock. Sometimes we know the doors are closed because of our disobedience, lack of following directions, or ignoring spiritual principles. Okay, so we know that doors are closed, but we can pray and we can knock on that door and God will open it or let us know what we must do to get it open. For example, if we know, if we knock on the door of being in charge of stewardship, we must demonstrate good stewardship. If we're not a good steward, God will teach us good stewardship so that he can open that door for us. If we want to be a professional person, God will open that door for us to go to school to prepare for that. God will open doors that are closed to us, uh, jobs, positions, etc. Because sometimes we're not qualified. But if we pray, we can still get it. <clears throat> I know many people who got jobs they weren't qualified for. I know many people who got into training that they could not afford or didn't think the people would let them in. God will open doors that are closed because of our race or our ethnic background. He will open doors. So this is the this is the, the open door part. So in these three areas, God will open doors for us, but we must not. We must not. And we must make that an everyday part of our life. So let's go a little further with this. For everyone who keeps on asking receives, and he who keeps seeking finds, and to him who keeps knocking, it will be open. 
Inez, you still there? Um, yes. Oh, okay. Uh, let, let me let you say what you were going to say. I can hear you now. <laughs> what about well, about prayer? Yeah, what you were trying to tell me when, when I couldn't hear you. Oh, okay. I didn't know you could hear me. My daughter, my granddaughter was talking to me. <laughs> and I was trying to keep keep from disturbing you by answering her because she had just walked in the house. But I'll okay. I'm just listen to you and, and then well actually I was listening to what you were saying about prayer and the things uh -huh. you have listed here. And I find those things to be very encouraging. And I can just say what I what I was thinking about when you first started talking about prayer that I used to just pray for things and then I was reading Daniel. And I saw that Daniel was his he prayed three times a day. And I said to and it's interesting, well, myself that I, I could pray three times a day or more than that. So that was many, 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 many years ago. So now I just pray about I just pray, walk around I make I make prayer with the Lord because that's what we can do, because we are talking to him. We can make it in our heart, and when we we can even if someone asks us to pray out, we can pray out loud. But mostly, asks us to make it. We can make it in our hearts, and go in our closets, and we can pray about everything. And I like what you had listed there. That was, you know, good. Yeah, we should because he's expecting that. Yeah, you see, he says pray and uh, ask and keep on asking, and when you're talking to him, that's prayer. When well, yes. you're talking to him and communicating with him, that's prayer. And you just keep on asking for things. Don't just ask for a few things and say, okay, um, you know, this is too small for me to ask God for, or this is too big for me to ask God for, or I should, I should know better. And this is common sense. You know, we come up with a lot of reasons why, but we don't know that God gives us the natural example of talking to our family as an example spiritually of how we're supposed to talk to him. And our prayer is how we talk to him. So here we're talking about God gives us these three ways to get things from him. But we must ask, we must seek, and we must knock. We must make this a part of our lifestyle and just not a part of a religious routine. Thank you, Grandma. Matthew Henry concise uh, commentary yeah. talks about whatever we pray for according to the promise shall be given to you if God see it fit for you and what would you have more? This is made to apply to all that pray everyone that pray that ask receive whether they're Jews or Gentiles young or old, rich or poor high or low Master or servant, learned or unlearned, all are alike and are welcome to the throne of grace if they come in faith. Many of us think that we will not receive certain things from God for one reason or another. But that's not how it works. Everyone who keeps on asking receives, and he who keeps on seeking finds, and to him who keeps on knocking, it will be open. So it's up to us to change the way we do things. You know, we're in the store trying to pick out uh, something. We got to buy some new pots and pans. And we see several different ones, and we're not sure which ones are the best. Uh, do we say, God, which one should I get? That's what we're supposed to do. And then when he tells us, we're supposed to obey. That's exactly what we're supposed to do. You know, um, maybe we're looking for a new cell phone company. And we're saying, well, God, which one should I get? And when he tells us, we need to obey that. Because he's going to tell us. Why? Because we ask. He's not going to force his way into our lives. We have to invite him in. We have to ask him for stuff. So the, the scripture goes on to say, of what man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, instead he will give him a stone? Okay, so we're scared to ask God for stuff. Just scared. You know, 
this scripture is not here for nothing. He's saying, if we ask for bread, he'll give us bread. He will not give us a stone. He's not going to punish us. Or if we ask for a fish, will instead he give us a snake? He's not going to do that. But some of us feel we deserve that because of what we're doing. But he doesn't do that. He is a loving, faithful, kind God. You know, if then you are evil, sinful by nature, we, we, we are. As you are, know how good to give good and advantageous gifts to your children. How much more will your father, who is in heaven, perfect as he is, give what is good and advantageous to those who keep on asking him? God wants to give his children good and advantageous gifts. But we must ask, seek, and knock. God will not give us gifts that do not line up with his word. You know, and that's part of our problem, too. God will not give us sinful things. He will not help us do sinful things. There's no point in asking about that. There's no point in seeking about that. And there's no point in knocking about that. Because he's not going to participate in sin. God will not give us things that are not, uh, that we're not spiritually mature enough to handle immediately. But he will prepare us to receive those things so that he can give them to us. So we, uh, so we keep God busy by asking, seeking, knocking for everything we need or want. You know, I had to learn my lesson about asking for some things. Because I asked for a lot of things I wasn't prepared to receive. And I would start going through the test to get prepared. And I said, oh, my goodness. I, I, you know, I, I knew maybe I should have evaluated my ability to handle what I asked for. Because as soon as I asked for it, he started me through the process of getting ready. If I'm not ready. You know, so... That's one thing that we have to evaluate ourselves about. Also be diligent about asking, seeking, and knocking for other people. Intercession is a part of Christian lifestyle. We must be happy when people are happy and sad when people are sad. Pray for all your sisters and brothers in Christ, not just for the people you know. Not just for them. When you see someone in trouble, intercede for them. When you see an accident on the road, pray for them. When you know that something is about to happen and that's not good and that should not happen, pray. And so I just want to ask you, when you see an accident on the road, what do you what do? you do? Or do you just say, oh my goodness, an accident, and then just drive on by? Or do you pray, Lord, let it not be to death. Let them not be as hurt. Keep them safe, Father. What, whatever, whatever you can come up with, do you do that? You know, that is, that is asking, seeking, and knocking all the time. You know, when you know something, is going to happen that's wrong and it's going to cause a problem, do you pray? Do you pray? And so we're supposed to pray all the time. So I'm just saying, do not fear. Know who you are in Christ and God will not give you bad things. Do not be afraid to pray. Pray. <coughs> In Hebrew chapter 2, verse 5 through 8, it talks about who we are. For unto the angels he has not put in subjection the world to come, where we speak. But one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him? That was David. Or son of man that thou visited him? That was David that said that. Thou maketh him a little lower than the angels. 
Thou crowned him with glory and honor, and didst set him over the works of thy hand. Thou hast put all things in, subje uh, in uh, subjection under his feet. For in that he put all subjection under him, and left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. So we don't get it. God has put everything he created under us and given us authority to deal with it, except each other. We don't have authority to deal with each other, but everything else he created, we have authority over, you know, but we don't know that. And we don't act like we know that. And we don't think that, you know, things are subject to us because of who we are. You know, when I found this out years ago, I started talking to animals. I talked to plants, you know, <laughs> I talked to them. And I had, I had some bees I had some bees uh, that was out there in my uh, power box over the air, air conditioning unit. And they and they had made a little hive out there. And the air conditioning man came, but the air conditioning was frozen. And he couldn't do anything with it until it thawed out. So he said, uh, you probably need to get something and spray and kill those bees because I'm not going to be able to work with this all those bees in that in that in that unit. So what I did, I went out there and I told those bees, if you don't move by morning, I'm gonna spray all of you because you can't stay in there. That's my box. Find you somewhere else to go. So I got my little spray and went out there the next morning, they were all gone. They were gone. So I tried it again, and <laughs> they got me this time. But I didn't bother them because I did. I wasn't specific. They, they some wasps had a build a nest on my carport, and I told them, "You can't stay on this carport. This belongs to me. I can't come out here and de deal with you guys. Go there are all those trees out there. Go find a tree. You will find a tree and put your nest in. Don't be putting your nest in here." You know, and so I, I'm not going to deal with you having your nest in here. And by morning, I want you gone. So I got up the next morning. They were gone, but guess what tree they went to? The tree that's over my mailbox. <laughs> <laughs> so I let them stay there because I wasn't specific about what trees to go to. <laughs> You didn't come and park over the mailbox. <laughs> but anyway, um, just practice. I mean, you know, if we have dominion over everything that God created, why do we act like it, that, that it has dominion over us? Why do we think that things can do things? You know, uh, I have a way, you know, I, People just fuss at some time about dogs. And when I see the dogs, I just stop and talk to them. And they stop barking and they stop doing all the stuff that they're doing. Um, now, I'm wise enough not to not to uh, try to talk to a dog that can't hear and, and that's been trained to attack no matter what they hear. You know, uh, some people are like that. <laughs> They can't hear and they can't see. So what I'm saying is we act like things will have dominion over us instead of we having dominion over them. And so we don't pray and we don't say what we need to say to get stuff going, you know. And so Jameson Fawcett Brown's Bible commentary says, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Uh, though there seems evidently a climax here, 
expressive or more or more importantly, uh, yet each of these terms used present what we desire of God in a different light. We ask for what we wish, we seek for what we miss, and we knock for that which we feel ourselves shut out. So God gave us three ways to get things. And we should use those three ways to get things. You know, we should use those three ways. So let's go back to asking. So Inez, do you make a practice of asking for everything or just I, I, how how do you pray? You just pray when you need to, or what? When I when I pray, I I pray through I pray through the day for for everything, and I mainly my my prayers for are the comfort of my children, my cousins, and friends, and that God would bless them, and for my strength and my courage to to keep on keeping on keep on going forward. And that's a daily walk and a daily prayer. Because if we don't, then we can get, you know, the Bible tells us watch as well as pray so we not be taken into, you know, temptation and other things. And the stuff that we do because we're not watching, we're not praying or paying attention. So so I just, I pray. Well, you know, myself, when I'm dry washing, if whatever I'm doing, I have a word that I'm saying to the Lord. And I ask him for things to ask him to, Bless things and bless, you know, people that I know and concern with, families and things like that. So it's it's a constant thing. Not mm -hmm. that I'm so good and perfect. It's just that life has taught me I needed to pray, especially read it the way it says, you know, we forget not to pray and then to continue in prayer. So we we need to pray. Okay, so here's the deal. Only God can do what we need done. Right. So if we're not praying for everything, we're missing out. Mm -hmm. You know, people can't do it. God used people, but the power is God. The grace is God's. The mercy is God's. The kindness is God. The forgiveness is God. Everything comes from God. Mm -hmm. He uses people, but it comes from him. So you can't get something done without God. He is the answer. He's always the answer. I was talking to somebody on yesterday and uh, they were telling me that uh, one of their cousins called up and said that they were coming to spend the day with them. And all the years that they've been moving around, that particular cousin has never visited her. And she yeah. said she prayed for there to be peace and cohesiveness of the family for the family you know to 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 be closer and uh, a lot of times we're praying for things and we don't even recognize when God gives it to us and so she was talking about uh what a good time she had with her cousin and and there was that cohesiveness there was that communication she didn't have to, and, and she lives here and the cousin lives in Philadelphia. She didn't have to go to Philadelphia. They always go to Philadelphia, but the cousin never comes here. This time, the cousin came and stayed all day. You know, so why don't we have things? Because we don't ask. We have to ask for things that we want. We have to ask for things that we need, you know. Uh, so it's very important that we that we learn how to ask and we learn how to seek and we learn how to knock. You know, um, answering to this threefold representation is a triple assurance of success of our believing effort. But, ah, uh, might some humble disciples say, I cannot persuade myself that I have any interest with God to meet this 
our Lord repeats the triple assurance he has given us, but in such a form as to silence every such complaint. Now, people are still saying they don't believe that God will do it for them. They have not signed up for, they've not signed up for the authority that God has given them. They don't believe that God will give it to them regardless of what they do. And it's really strange because they will deal with their children regardless of what they do. You know, they won't give up on them. Uh, whatever they need to do to get the children straight, if they need counseling or if they need medical help or <clears throat> whatever they need to get them back on track, if they're off track, uh, they'll do. So why why we why do we think God won't do that for His children? Why do we think God's going to punish us? Why do we think we don't deserve stuff? Why do we think that somebody else is going to get it and we won't? Why do we think that? Because we've been taught by man who would do that stuff. But God won't. They give up on you. No, they'll give up on you. <laughs> and you know, they'll talk over you and treat you like you're nothing. And then you start believing it. One thing that I want us to walk away with one way not to get angry with people is stop believing what they say about you. If what they say about you is not true and you know what the word of God says about you, why get angry with them? They don't know what they're talking about. When you get angry with somebody that's that's fussing and telling you what they think you are, you, you're acting like you believe what they say. But if you if you know who you are, you know, you won't do it. And and I guarantee you, you don't do it now. For the things that you know that who you are, if somebody come up and tell you, well, you're not doing this, well, you don't know how to cook, and you're an excellent cook, and everybody else know it, you don't get mad with them. <laughs> you just look at them like, what? And go on about your business. You don't get mad with them. You know, if you're uh, a person who loves to give and you've been giving and giving and giving and giving all your life and somebody come to you and say, you need to learn how to give. You're just as stingy as you can be. You don't get mad about it because you know they're lying. You know that's not true. But the stuff they say that you have not signed up for in the word of God, you get mad because you believe it. If you don't believe it, you can't get mad. You know, if they don't know how to treat you and they treat you bad and God has already said how we should treat our sisters and brothers in Christ, why would we get mad with them? They've already set themselves up for some bad stuff. That's the time to pray for them. That's why God says pray for your enemies. Do something good to them and forgive them. Yes. You know, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I want to, um, uh, give one of the, I think, I think one person is on here know what I'm talking about. You may not know Inez, but I, I made some little packets about 10 years ago with some, an apple seed in it. And I was teaching about seed time and harvest. And what I said on the seed, there's a whole tree in this seed. And the seed is really tiny. You know, you know how, what the size of an apple seed is in an apple. Yeah. A whole tree is in that seed. 
And when that tree grow up, it'll have hundreds of apples on it and hundreds of seeds in those apples. So God's purpose is when you plant this, let it be something good because I'm going to multiply it. But if it's something bad, I'm still going to multiply it because that's in the earth. So I like to give people that one seed and say, hey, listen, this, there's a whole tree in this seed. And all these apples and apples, you're going to get more seed and you're going to get more apples that will make you miserable, just like you're making this person miserable because of this one seed that you planted of misery to this person. You're going to get all of this misery back. Hmm. So, even though it's hard for us to do that, God wants us to pray for folks because they don't know what they're doing. How do we know that? They don't know what they're doing. When Jesus was on the cross and he had a spear in his side and nails in his feet and hands and had been beat so he had raw skin on his back and a crown of thorns on his head that was so sharp it was causing bleeding. What did he say? Those people that were doing that, they were his enemies because they didn't know any better. So what he said was, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. They don't know. And so that's what we're supposed to do. Forgive people because they don't know what they're doing. Most of the time when people's crop come up from seeds they plant, they don't even recognize them. You know, I was looking at some of the political candidates and they were doing stuff uh, like uh, saying stuff like, lock them up, lock them up. Next thing you know, they're the ones that's in position to be locked up. Yep. Planting seeds. And so when I see that happening, when I see that happening, Inez, I said, Lord, please help them stop doing that. They don't know what they're doing. All of that stuff is going to come back to them. You can't do anything that it doesn't come back. So the person that you're doing it to is not going to get the results that you're going to get for doing it. That person, all that person has to do is to forgive and release it because it's yeah. not true about what God says about you and me and we should not believe it and receive it and just get mad at people for doing it. So we, we can pray to God and just ask, God, help them not plant so many seeds, but protect us from those things that they desire to hurt us with. But help them. Don't want anything bad to happen to them. So we're asking you to protect us from the pain that they're trying to inflict on us. But help them because they don't understand. It's, it's, it's what we're supposed to do. Ask, seek, and knock, and keep on doing it all the time. Mm -hmm. And keep on doing it all the time. And that is key number 23. We're up to 23. I'm hoping I can get to 30. But I'll see what the Lord says about it. Uh, we're up to 23 now. And these have been wonderful. Um, Inez, do you have any comments? Or anything that could uh, you could share that's helped you understand this better? Well, all the, what, what I've said before, all, the, all that I saw was written. written was encouragement on to keep on praying and putting it before the Lord. 
But uh, one thing when I was praying and I and I prayed for something, and I had four daughters, and I was just, this is this is uh, what I wanted to say. I have four daughters, and I want the son so bad, and I would pray for a son. And I used to think, and I used to know there was nothing. The desire of my heart was to have a son, and I didn't worry about anything else. And I love my girls, and I, you know, cared for them and all that. But I just wanted the son so bad <laughs> that I would just pray constantly. So I just hear when I don't know. I'm just I'm just undecided by not asking for something more than one time. I know that Hannah did it when she wanted that she was barren. She wanted a child, so I don't know. I know sometimes I have asked for something for one time. I remember one time driving a car that used to turn. I go, I'm going straight, and the car would turn. Oh, I'm turning right, the car would go straight. <laughs> there was something wrong with transmission or something. And one day I was driving on the street, and I said, Lord, I want a car that don't stop on every corner. And and that's all I said. And then the Lord blessed me to be able to get that Volvo. I had, it was a Volvo, 1987. I wasn't even trying to buy a car. I go with my daughter to get a car, to get her a car. And the man said, I have a car for you. <laughs> I said, you do? And it was this Volvo that I drove for many years. But I, I'm just saying, when you say you can ask for something, it was just one time. That was just one time that was on my heart. I want, Lord, I want a car that doesn't stop in every corner. And that has happened before. Because we know God, we know that he does hear and answer prayer. And mm -hmm. my my, my comment is to say that I tell my kids, my grandkids, my little great grands every day, Jesus, you speak in the name of Jesus. He hears and he answers your prayers. Don't worry about whether yes, no, or whatever. When with the, with the answer come, you're going to know because he speaks clear. He's not a God. He's not. He's, he's a God of clear. He don't clarity. He doesn't offer confusion messages. So that's why I tell them all the time. He's the God of. He's not the God of confusion, for sure. And when we ask clear, and he answers clearly to us. But thank you for sharing that. That's true. He answers yeah. at the point of prayer. So this is not talking about asking him for the same thing 30 times. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you just asked the first time, and he answers prayer. Yes. After that point, we already answered, but sometimes we keep going on, like you know, be yeah, about this yeah, because we're that. impatient. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's what it is. Can I ask not, a question? Not, I don't believe it's the belief that it's just the patience. You know, yeah. I, I need that answer. Can I, I ask a question? Yes. Yeah. Can I ask a question? <laughs> yes, go ahead. This is Kavaya. Okay, so <laughs> when we ask for something. Uh, I mean, they usually say, uh, don't continue to do that. But what I would do is, is I start thanking him. I try to remember to thank him for what he, what he's about to do or what he, you know, what we ask for. And that, I'll just, I'll just pray and I'll seek his face. And mm -hmm. then you look, you just, but you have to, to me, you have to, you look forward to it. You have to be happy about it, that you know that he's your father and you know that he's going to give you and he's going to do, you know, what needs to be done for you or he has done what, you know, what needed to be done. So it's just about asking him and believing and thanking him. And sometimes I say, I don't know if it's right. But I said, well, I thank you in advance, Lord, for what you're about to do in my life and my children's life in the name of Jesus, because I had already prayed about it. So, And I believe that you're going to answer me. Yeah. So I just start thanking you. Okay, well, here's how that works. When you have faith, yeah. just like you have faith to be saved, and you ask for something and you put your faith on it, he answers, he gives it to you then and there. So when you're, when you're praying, you're thanking him. That's correct. You're thanking him for what he's done. And, yeah. and, and so if you have asked for something for your children, and so we were, we were talking about that. Um, he says, yes. He says, yes. Amen. But he has to prepare them to receive. Amen. Yes. 
he has to prepare them so that they can yes. see. But it, the answer is already yes. They already have it. They're not waiting but, on it. There's no good thing he would he would uh, withhold from us. Right. An That's example right. is um, my son was incarcerated and he came home and uh, he said, well, you know, I want, he was saying, you know, my life, I want to change. I want to do this. I want to do that. And uh, within himself, he, he praying because he even told me when he called me on the phone, he told me, he said, ma, I've been praying. I've been praying, ma. I've been talking to God and God been talking to me. I said, praise the Lord. So when he come out now, he said, ma, I want to change my life, my life. So he went, nobody pushed him. He went and he looked for a job and he set up appointments and he got the job. Amen. You understand? So mm -hmm. that gave him more confidence, you know, and more faith in God. But I think give him more faith in God. And then he said, well, Ma, I want to start this business. I want to start this business to help other people that has to go to that prison, our family members that had to go and see their people and they have nowhere there. I want to start this business. I don't need, I, I, I might need your help, but I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I said, son, just put God first. Mm -hmm. Just talk to your father because yeah. you was in there and you telling me why worry when you can pray. And that shut me, that shut my mouth straight up. Ma, why worry when you can pray? Why are you worrying when you can pray? Uh, all right, if you pray, then you shouldn't be worrying. I said, thank you, Jesus. And that was it. I just listened. <laughs> but I just want to give that testimony on his behalf of God. You know, just he put, he went and did what he's supposed to do. He prayed to God and he went and did what he was supposed to do. God answered his prayer, his prayers. And now he's, he's working. You know, and I praise God for that because before he didn't want it, it he said he wanted it, people want him to do it, but now he did it because he need he know he need to do it. And I don't want to say the wrong thing, but it's just it's just in time. You know, but that's all I want to say when it comes down to prayer. You know, I mean it's basically my kids and when you, you spoke earlier about going like you you see a car broken down on the road. And you don't know the reason why it's broken down, but you see, you know, you, so you, you pray for that. You pray for that person, mm -hmm. you know, but you don't know what God has stopped that person from or what was going on. But you pray and you, you know, you pray for that person. And when you were asking earlier about prayer mm -hmm. and stuff, when I see, you know, the ambulance go by, I had a habit of um, just praying. You don't know what is going on, but that ambulance is going there, and it's somebody's family, it's somebody's child, it's somebody you pray to God, you know, for whatever you think at that time is necessary. And I have seen miracles, and I praise God that we just keep on praying and thanking Him and just praising Him for all that He has done and all that He's doing. Amen. And I thank you all so much. Yeah, that was wonderful. Thank you for sharing. Amen. Yeah, thank you for sharing that because. We're we're talking about praying for everything, you know. I have I have just recently started praying for everything, and I um and I know that that works. I I was uh um unable to go and get me some food one time, and I said, Lord, you know, I need some food, uh, and I said what I needed, and I get home, one person brings me part of the food, and another person. <laughs> The other part, <laughs> yeah, and so that's that's what I mean about asking yes. for everything. That seems small, you know, but I couldn't do it myself, so I asked, and God yes. gave. Mm -hmm. So and I, He fulfilled those needs, and yeah. then it makes you happy. So you your faith is building. For me, my faith is building. I said, mm -hmm. look at God. I said, oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. You know, so even if I can't find the car keys and I have to go to work, mm -hmm. I said, Lord Jesus, I thank you because I don't know what you're keeping me from, but I need to go to work and then I'll find the keys. Or I'll call the lady, say, look, I'm, I'll be there like in 15 minutes. So, you know, 
or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to look for the car keys, but things like that, you know, and then you don't know. We don't know. We rush to do some things sometime and God is uh, trying to help us to understand. Just take a minute, take a minute for me and pray. Thank me. And when you go to the door, you, so you did you pray Psalms 91? Did you pray anything? Did you say anything this morning? Other than thank you, Lord, for waking me up this morning and you on your way running out the door and now you can't find the keys, but it stopped you because it stopped me because I don't, I didn't pray. I said, Lord, please forgive me. And I don't know what you kept me from, you know, and I just, you know, you just humble yourself. But God, the little thing sometime, mm -hmm. Dr. White, the little thing sometime, mm -hmm. it builds our faith in God. Yeah, it builds yeah. it builds our faith in God more and more. It might seem to other people, I mean, even people don't know about it, but when God do those things and he keep doing things and he keep doing different things, you ask, for, and to me, that's continuous to build your faith, build your faith, and then you ask for something else. You know, you, know, you pray, you thank him, and you ask for something else, and you something else, and it just keep building your faith. Mm -hmm. That it's nothing impossible with God. It's nothing that's impossible Amen. with God. Amen. I agree. Amen. Well, okay. Well, I thank both of you for sharing. And because that's the people that are going to be watching this need to understand that God loves everybody and he'll do for them what he's doing for you and for me. You know, Amen. so. Amen. Thank you so much. I'm going to pray and close us out because our time is up. Um, Father, we thank you. We thank you and we praise you, God. And we ask you, God, to help us learn how to keep praying and keep trusting, keep yes. believing you and trusting you and putting you first as we have been talking about, giving you everything that you have given to us back to you. Yes, and we just thank you right now for uh, for prospering what we put our hands to. We thank yes. you for moving our children where you desire that they be. And that they have a relationship with you that that uh, they can move and breathe and have their being and don't have to connect with anybody to get to you. They can do it themselves. And so God, we thank you and we praise you for everything that you're doing and everything that you've already done uh, because you are not in time. You, you are in the present all the time. We just thank you, God, and we praise you. And we give you glory. And we just ask you to bless everything that we put our hands to so that Amen. we can do the work of the kingdom and please you according to your will and according to your way and according to the desires of your heart. We thank you for it right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, ladies, we are finished for tonight. I just want to say good night. Thank you for joining. We just had a wonderful session on tonight. Thank you for sharing. Um, just such a blessing to hear from you. So thank you so much. Both good of us. Okay, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.